Real Agriculture's coverage of Agritechnica 2019 is brought to you by Bravant. Seed. Yield. Easy. Sean Aini here with Real Agriculture. We're at Agritechnica 2019 in Hanover, Germany. Brought to you by Bravant. And right now we're with Wes Lafroy from Rabobank. Hey, Wes, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me, Sean. It's great to be here. Yeah. So what do you do at Rabobank? So I'm an analyst in the research team in Rabo. So we have 90 analysts across the world, which essentially it's our responsibility to understand what's going on across a range of markets, link it together globally, bring it back locally, and ultimately deliver that to the farm gate in terms of what does it mean. And you're doing some video, you're doing some podcasts, that kind of stuff? We are. We're, we're here doing our, our first ever virtual tour, if you like. So we're in the middle of the Australian harvest at the moment. So many of our farmers c can't make it to Agritechnica. So uh, we've had a lot of success with our podcast channel and uh, we're also trying out the medium of uh, videos as well to uh, deliver those insights back home to Australia and New Zealand. Okay, so first time here at the show? It is my first time, yes. Yeah, you know, your background is in precision ag. There's a lot of technology here. It's, it's hard to get your mind wrapped it around is. a lot of it. So what, what's been your impression? I think the major thing that I've really enjoyed as, as someone who, who works a lot in ag tech and precision ag, is actually coming here and, and you know, taking that leap from talking about the technologies and, and talking about them in theory to actually going, wow, there's a drone pod that has green on green that can actually you know, identify weeds, then go and spray them and actually do the whole job at once. So you, right. you know, you're linking together that whole data collection, data analysis, and actually executing a decision on it. Do, do you find it difficult to figure out, because you know, Four years ago, there was like two robots. Yeah. You know, two years ago, there was a lot of them, and you know this whole area, and and now every booth seems to have them because yeah. they're trying. Everyone's trying to show that they can actually keep pace. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to filter through what's legit and what's just sort of a company faking it? Well, absolutely. That's. I think that's a challenge for for everyone, and certainly a lot of the farms that I've talked to across Australia and New Zealand who are looking at adopting a lot of these technologies. Yeah. It, it's actually better you know it's a challenge for them trying to understand okay how much value does this actually bring me and, and I guess in my conversations this week that's certainly something I've been trying to dig through and understand a little bit more but I think at the end of the day a lot of it will will, will be uh, revealed when you know we see a lot of these technologies start to be commercialized and get feedback from those first adopters and we're seeing a lot of different threads of strategy right we're yep. seeing everything from you know a cabless tractor full-size tractor yep. to you know little swarming technologies yep. uh, it, it seems there's a, there's a space here for large and small farmers in in, in this kind of concept yeah uh, I think there's 27 holes here yeah uh, I, I would have been to less than half of them I think and as someone who from obviously from from Australia and working in Australia and New Zealand agriculture there's some machines here that you know it's taken me a few minutes to actually work out what they do just because yeah, yeah, exactly. just, just because uh, you know the, the the variety of agriculture at the show and the variety yeah. of industries involved in this show is so varied I walked yeah. through the uh, the forestry pavilion uh, actually two days ago and some of the machines there were, were pretty awe-inspiring yeah, it's like when you go through the vineyard section yeah. you're like okay we, we used to do these pieces that was uh, what is that yeah you can try to guess uh, what it was so yeah quite 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 diverse um, let's talk about a little bit about uh, what's your perception of uh, the drone spraying yeah. versus the robot spraying will are both kind of moving forward equally or yeah. do you see one having a bit of a leg up on the other talk about that uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. I think it does depend very significant. It does depend a lot uh, from what what specific thing you're trying to trying to achieve. I think we're going to see the at least the swarm type robotics enter the market before. I think before uh, we see you know the independent drone type pod technologies yeah. hit, hit, the, hit the market. And I guess the major reason that I think that is because. Drones have a lot more regulatory requirements that they've got to jump through, and in terms of things like battery power as well, you know, actually moving the machine, it takes yeah. a lot more energy to actually lift weight off the ground than it does to pull it along the ground. So, drones have that other extra set of challenges in terms of actually supplying enough power to the machine uh, for it, for it to to you know, do an adequate adequate job. Yeah, and. Honestly, I think you know you mentioned the regulation. Yeah. The other big hang-up is connectivity. Yeah. Without 5G, 
I, some of this is not even possible. And yeah. a lot of the, the innovators here will say, yeah, you're right. Right. And I'm sure in Australia, connectivity is just as big of a deal as it is in Canada and the US. Yeah. Well, you, we, as we were walking over here, you mentioned everyone's talking about 5G. A lot of farmers in Australia and New Zealand are still trying to get 4G. Yeah. Um, but I guess my key message to a lot of the farms I talk to is that I think there's solutions that are coming onto the market that, that will relieve the pressure in this area. So in terms of long term strategic planning and investment for farming, I don't think a lot of these farmers should be planning for a future without connectivity because we're seeing more solutions uh, independent of a lot of the big telecom providers come into the yeah. market, which can actually deliver things like Wi-Fi, can, can deliver, you know, can amplify signals in different parts of the farm as well. Well, we saw John Deere has this base station where basically satellite driven and you know, they're using they're using it in Brazil and it it basically provides 40 kilometers range of 5G network. Here in Germany, it's only about, I think, two to four kilometers, yeah. but that's, that's an example where some farms may be able to just do it on their own. You're absolutely right. And, and I haven't seen any Wi-Fi type networks here, here at the show yet, but you know, there's examples of farmers in Australia that, that are actually building Wi-Fi networks on their farm so they can link together yeah. ca their own cameras on things like field bins, troughs, you name it. So yeah, For sure. So Wes, uh, you're going to go back home and uh, bring all this content back. What's, some, what's your main message to the customers of Rubblebank? Well, I think this has just really reinforced for me that the potential this technology will play, or well, the potential of this technology, its potential impact in the next five to ten years. And I think there's so many things, and it's not necessarily the value that it create this technology creates on the farm. There's other things that need to be taken into account, such as you know how the use of these technologies manage risk, help farmers manage risk, and, and certainly climate risk in Australia is a is a big part of the moment with with the drought. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, but also things like how how they're going to change business models, and a lot of the technologies that I've talked to, uh, technology providers I've talked to, it, you know, it hasn't necessarily been a straight you buy this. Uh, you buy this technology and go and deal with it yourself. So I think we're going to see technologies that you know, impact things like risk. We're going to see business things like business model changes. Also data relationships between stakeholders, uh, supply chain stakeholders and farmers will also change. Uh, so for me, this, is, this, this, mar this show has, has really reinforced that, that farmers need to be watching this quite closely and, and it's, technology is going to play more than a role than just adding value. Absolutely. Hey, Wes, what's the name of the podcast? Uh, Rabe Research, Food and Agribusiness uh, for Australia and New Zealand. Uh, cool. And I also host a, a Tech Talk uh, podcast on there every month or so. But you can uh, have a listen to all our Agri-Technica podcasts over the last five days. Awesome. That's fantastic. Wes, thanks a lot and uh, safe travels home. Thanks, Sean. It's, it's been great to be on. Uh, I was in Canada recently, as I, as I mentioned earlier. In Banff. In Banff, yeah, yes. Nice. Doing the tourist thing and really enjoyed it. So yeah. thanks very much for having me. Well, thank you.